Marie Watkins, Professor Emerita of Art History at Furman University in Greenville, South Carolina, is a specialist in American art of the 19th and 20th centuries. Her professional activities have covered an array of disciplines and include teaching in the United States, Berlin, and London. She has curated exhibitions in the humanities and the sciences, as well as serving as a college administrator. Her writings appear in both art and science journals. She has also lectured widely on members of the Tau Society of Artists, particularly Joseph Henry Sharp. It's my pleasure to be standing in the restored Joseph Henry Sharp studio today. Uh, I've been coming to Taos, to the Kaus Sharp historic site for many, many years. And I've watched this transformation uh, of the space. I can remember when there were local artists working in here, their own studio. And I like to think that Sharp was maybe watching over their shoulder, perhaps an influence and an inspiration. But it's really lovely to see, again, how this has been recreated, reconstructed, uh, to create this space to look like the studio that Sharp worked in for so many, many years. I can remember opening the door for the first time, walking in, and I really felt like Sharp was supposed to be here, or he was here over in that corner as he was for so many years, easel in front, palette in hand, and uh, a Native American model standing in front of that Kiva fireplace, and he was turning out yet another one of his uh, paintings, his beloved paintings of Taos. Before Taos, there was Paris uh, for these Taos artists. Sharp, Kaus, Phillips, Blumenschein, all went there like other American artists of their generation. It was critical because Paris was the art capital of the world at this time. And uh, around 7,000 Americans were living there in Paris then. One in seven, though, was artists, which I think is a phenomenal number. And the reason they're going there is because of this, the opportunities that they could find uh, in Paris and, and around the area there. These are examples of Sharp's work with live models, but you note that they are clothed. And this is because uh, these are from his studies in Munich, which was from several years earlier. I don't have any, unfortunately, examples of his, his, these particular works in, in Paris at the time. But in Munich, there was a de-emphasis on the nude model, but otherwise, their course of study was very, very similar. Uh, to what was being done at the Ecole Beaux-Arts of the Academy Julian. And I've got uh, another uh, example too. It's a shot, a photograph from Sharp's studio from 1899. And if you look in the background, emerging out or, uh, are more Velazquez copies that you're seeing here. I could never find the original Sharp of this, but I've put a comparison up of uh, the Cardinal with uh, as a hunter in this particular image, so you can make a comparison between his Velazquez uh, and the original. This is an excellent example of a cow's work. It's the call. And when you look at this, you can see the semblance of Michelangelo, Michelangelo's David, the way, way he's standing there in this perfect contraposto. And of course, the David is a semblance of the Doriferous that we saw before, that fifth century Greek sculpture that John White had painted. So just as you've got this young Michelangelo, again, uh, demonstrating his understanding of Greek theories of contraposto with sculpture, Kaus is doing the exact same thing with the painting and the call, with this semblance of the David, the Doriferous, and this understanding of contraposto that's so critical to ancient art that's been passed down uh, through centuries, through the generations. What comes through in Sharp's Man with a Hoe is the strength and this beauty. And he's in this other world, this detachment that I just mentioned. It's like he's somewhere between Taos and he's somewhere between Paris. He's kind of in this nether world, I think, that Sharp has created here. 
And just to reemphasize again, too, this idea of Millet influencing so many people, Van Gogh especially. Van Gogh painted numerous uh, copies of Millet's work. And this is a quote that I especially like, what he wrote. He says, they are not copies that I've done, but translations into another language. And I think that can be applied to what Sharp was doing as, re as well as these other artists, again, with the work that we're seeing here.